All right, welcome. Today we are beginning our notes on similar triangles. Um, this is not all that different from what we are looking at with congruent triangles. A uh, big difference here is that similar triangles will have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. Um, so the angles will still be all congruent, but the sides will instead be proportional. Um, so before we start looking at that, we're going to need to review some ratios to see if we remember how these work. Um, so ratios basically break up something into parts. Um, if we are talking about the um, standard ratio, you can see it written as like A to B, or you'll sometimes see it written with the colon, or even as a fraction, which we'll get into a bit more when we're looking at proportions. Um, when you see the phrase extended ratio, that just means that we can compare like more than two things. Um, so how does this work when we put it in practice? Basically, we know that the ratio is just taking some total and breaking it into parts. Um, so if we're told that the ratio of the measures of the angles of a triangle are 3, 4, and 5, and we need to find the angles, we know that we're going to take our triangle and we're going to split it up so that the smallest angle has three parts, the biggest angle has, or so the middle sized angle has four parts, and the largest angle has five parts. But we don't actually know what each of those angles is. We do, however, know that the total is supposed to equal up to 180 degrees. So if I go into my triangle, let's say I have the smallest angle here, I know it's supposed to take that 180 and split it up into parts of 3. So let's call that guy 3x. I know that the middle size angle is supposed to be split up into four parts. So let's call that guy 4x. And then the largest angle we can call 5x. So again, we know that these three values together are supposed to equal up to 180. So if I take the 3x and add it to the 4x, and then add in the 5x, It come out to 180. So 3x plus 4x plus 5x, that's going to give me 12x. Divide both sides by 12, and we should get that x is equal to 15. So remember that we weren't actually looking for x, we were looking for the sides of the angles. So if I take 3 times 15, it gives me 45 degrees. If I take 4 times 15, it's going to equal 60. And then if I take 5 times 15, I'm going to get 75. And those are the angles of the triangle. They add up to 180 and they fit the ratio of 3, 4, 5. Now let's go ahead and try the guided practice. Let's take a look at another example of some ratios. Um, so if our ratios are written as fractions, and we are trying to solve for a missing piece of that ratio, remember that we're going to use cross multiplication. We've also seen this called the butterfly method. So remember, you're going to take the top of one fraction and multiply it to the bottom of the other fraction. So if I'm solving this out, I know that 6 times 31.5 is going to give me 189. I know that 21 times x is 21x. And we 
we remember from solving equations that we need to just divide both sides by 21. So x is going to equal 9. Over here, we're looking at the same thing. So again, you're going to want to circle the pieces that you're multiplying together. So x plus 3 gets multiplied by 5. And 4x gets multiplied by 2. Remember when we have a number in front of the parentheses that is telling us to distribute the 5 or multiply it to all the numbers inside the parentheses. And now we have our regular equation that we can solve. So we'll subtract the 5 on both sides and then divide everything by 3. Go ahead and knock out the guide of practice. Again, remember, cross multiply and then solve your equation. All right, so when we're discussing similar polygons, we're going to notice that these work a lot like um, congruent polygons in that you're going to get a similarity statement. Notice instead of having an equal sign, they're just going to put the squiggle. So this guy by itself just means similar. The order that we write the letter still matters because that's telling us which angles correspond to each other. So angle A has to be congruent to angle W. Angle B has to be congruent to angle X. C matches with Y and then Z is congruent to D. And you can use that to help you set up your proportions when you're solving for the missing sides of similar figures. Um, the ratio of the sides is referred to as the scale factor. So if I'm looking at this triangle here, a to b is 6, x to y is 3, those two sides are corresponding, so the ratio is 6 to 3, which you could then reduce to 2. So if I am given two figures and asked to find the scale factor, I'm going to figure out which parts correspond. Right? So it told me that AB corresponds to PQ. It told me that you know BC corresponds to QR, and so on and so forth. Um, so what we need to do is figure out how the sides match up. So I notice there's an 8 over here, and this is marked as congruent, so I'm going to fill in an 8 here. I notice that these two marks mean that these two sides are congruent, so there has to be a 4 over here. And then when I look at the bottom, I see that only one side of this pentagon is filled in. So we have a 3. We need to figure out which side matches up with RS. So if I go back to the congruence sta or the similarity statement, RS matches up with CD. So RS has a 3, CD has a 4. So CD, like we said, matches up with RS. So our similarity ratio, our scale factor, is 4 to 3. So to find the perimeter of the figure, we're just going to take the perimeter of the figure that we know, so the larger pentagon we have all the sides for, and we remember that perimeter is just the total of all the sides added together. So if I just go around, that's 8 plus 8 plus 4 plus 6, plus 4. Add all that up, and it gives me 30. And so like we said, the scale factor is the proportional or the ratio between the two figures. So 4 over 3 is equal to 30 
over x, again because the 30 was the perimeter for the larger figure. Since the 4 is bigger than the 3, the 30 has to go on top. We're just going to cross multiply to set up our equation. So 4 times x is going to give me 4x. 3 times 30 is going to give me 90. So if I divide everything by 4, x gives me 22.5. And that is it for that. So look at your guided practice. Set it up the same way. Um, we're going to look at our final example now. So we're given a similarity statement. AB or ACDF is similar to VWYZ. Here's our two figures. And we are asked to find some missing variables. So if I am looking for X, X goes between F and D. If I look at that similarity statement, df is proportional to yz. So that means the x matches up with the 10. And so now I need two other corresponding sides to fill out my proportion. Um, so if I look at the two figures, I know af and I know CD. On the bottom figure, I only know WY. So if I go back to my similarity statement, WY is proportional to CD. So again, WY, which was 6, is proportional to CD, which is 9. So now we've got our proportion set up. Go ahead and solve it out. So 6x equals 90, which tells us that x equals to 15. All right, so we can do the same thing with y. We know that the y, uh, v to z matches up with a to f. So 3y minus 1 matches with the 12. So again, we need two corresponding sides of the other figure, of the other figure rather. We might as well use the 6 and the 9 again, but this time we need to flip it around, right? Because the 6 comes from the smaller figure, as does the 3y minus 1. So we'll go ahead and solve it out. So 9 times 3y minus 1 is equal to 6 times 12, which is 72. So 27y minus 9 equals 72, which tells us that 27y equals 81, which means that y equals 3. So again, we just use our similarity statement to set up our proportions, cross, multiply, and then solve. Um, that is all that we have for today. I will see you guys next time.